Nowadays, insulin resistance is becoming more and more common. In this video, I am going to show you what you can do starting today to save your future self from suffering the consequences of type 2 diabetes. Enjoy. Hello everybody, Dr. Brian Desvonik here. If this is your first time watching my channel and you enjoy improving your health and feeling great, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and click the bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. If you've been diagnosed with prediabetes, it means that you're starting to develop insulin resistance, which means your cells are becoming resistant to the effects of insulin. Insulin is a hormone that is made and released from your pancreas in response to eating carbohydrates and proteins. And it serves two main functions. Number one, it helps your body to store fat. And number two, it acts like a key that opens up your cells so that sugar could get inside of your cell to be converted into a usable form of energy that is used throughout your entire body. Your cells are like little factories that break chemical bonds in glucose, which is a sugar that you get in your diet. In a perfect world, the key insulin always works to open the cell so that the sugar can get inside and the little factory can do what it needs to do. Glucose is a good thing, but too much of a good thing could be a bad thing. If you're eating too much sugar too frequently, the cells are gonna be at full capacity. Your little factories are gonna be all gummed up and no new sugar is going to be allowed to be put inside the cell until the cell needs it. When your cells can't fit any more sugar in them, you end up getting more sugar hanging out in the bloodstream. And what that does is that signals your pancreas to release more insulin and that extra insulin still can't work to open up the cell because the cell is full. So you start storing that sugar as fat and all the excess sugar that you don't store as fat starts ripping up your cardiovascular system, leading to the complications of diabetes. There's a way to stop this vicious cycle and make your cells run more efficiently, and that involves exercising at specific times, lowering your dietary intake of carbohydrates and refined sugars, and supplementing your diet with key nutrients and botanical medicines. For insulin resistance, the best time of day to exercise is after a long fast because this forces your muscles to use up all of the temporary stored sugars so that they become hungry for more sugar. After you eat, your body stores sugar in a form of starch known as glycogen inside of your liver cells and muscle cells. And if you don't exercise and you just go about your day-to-day -day normal routine, after about eight hours, your body will burn through most of that stored sugar as long as you don't eat anything else. Exercising makes your cells more hungry, especially whenever you're exercising in a fasted state. So if you ate your last amount of calories around 7 p.m. the night before, and you go to bed, and you wake up in the morning, you don't eat breakfast yet, instead you do your workout, you will have gone all of those hours, and by that point, you will have very little stored sugar in your muscles and then after your workout your muscles are going to be starving for more sugar which decreases their insulin resistance it actually makes the cells more likely to accept the key to get the sugar inside the cells if you follow this routine of exercising in a fasted state eventually your cells will become more and more likely to take up the sugar and your insulin resistance will go down and your blood sugar will lower. Once you get in the habit of adjusting your exercise routine appropriately, then you can start making adjustments to your diet. Intermittent fasting and avoiding refined sugars will have the greatest dietary impact on your insulin resistance. For intermittent fasting, the 5-2 diet is a great starting point and I made another video on this and I'll put that link down below as well as a link to the 5-2 diet book by Kate Harrison. As for avoiding refined sugars, you should watch my video on how to overcome sugar addiction. But just to summarize here, you should start avoiding these from your diet because these sugars are keeping you insulin resistant. This is the dark side of Western culture. Companies load their products with these sugars to keep you addicted. It's actually quite twisted if you think about it because the overconsumption of refined sugars 
is ruining people's health. Besides avoiding refined sugars, you wanna limit your consumption of complex carbohydrates. So ditch the chips and snack foods. In fact, you really shouldn't even be snacking in between meals at all. You should only be eating your carbohydrates with your meals. Limit your serving size of carbohydrate rich foods like these to one serving per meal. You should eat them at meal times only so that you don't snack between the meals, which will spike your insulin at unnecessary times of the day. If you remember from earlier, too much insulin equals too much body fat. You can also do the keto diet, but for many people eating the keto diet, they're just not getting enough carbohydrates, and so when they're trying to work out, they're not having enough energy, and since exercise, in my opinion, is the most important thing for insulin resistance, you can still eat a small amount of carbohydrates just to get that energy so that you can exercise to get the benefits of that. In addition to exercise and dietary changes, there are some herbs and minerals that help with insulin resistance as well. I prioritize dietary supplements last after lifestyle modifications because I don't want you to think that these supplements, which are supplementing your diet, are gonna give you the best effect. You will get the best effect from the things that are the hardest to do, and that is the exercise and the dietary changes. With that said, supplementing your diet with the following herbs and minerals may also help to improve your insulin resistance. A lot of dietary supplement companies will put these in proprietary formulas for your convenience. Here's my favorite product, and it's listed down below in the video description as well. In conclusion, if you have been diagnosed with prediabetes or insulin resistance, there is hope for you. As with anything in life, the more self-discipline you have and dedication you have, the greater the outcome you will get. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you'd like to share your experience, please do so down in the comment section below. I thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.